Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I'm Jim. This video is in Luminar Neo with a new update with AI masking. If you did not see that video, which was my last one, I covered all the updates and the new stuff, including the histogram and the various masking tools and controls that are in this newest update which is a free update if you don't have Luminar Neo, you can get it at the link down below. They are having a special sale for a little while. What I wanna do in this video is walk through an edit of a landscape photo showing how I use some of these AI masking capabilities to specifically target and customize areas of an image to my liking to basically get the edit that I wanna get. I mean, that's what it's always about, right? We're trying to edit a photo, make it look the way we want it to look. That's what I'm doing here. This is a recent photo from the lovely, beautiful state of Oregon. We were up there for a little while. I took some photos. Um, surprise. And uh, this was a sunset, which was just, um, well, it was gorgeous. So a few things I think about. The first one is, number one, I always shoot raw files. I've got a raw file here. And one of the things I don't talk a whole lot about, but it's fun and useful to experiment, are camera profiles. And in this case, I went with camera landscape. It gives a little bit richer feel, which I like quite a bit. So I started with that, and then I went into smart contrast and gave it a little bit of a bump there, like nine or 10. Highlights are coming down a little bit simply because I just wanna control the brighter parts of the sky. I'm always careful with that. Uh, especially in landscapes, uh, but the um, shadows, I'm gonna lift those quite a bit, like high 60s, 70s, something about like that. And already, I mean, it's quite obvious. I've got a much better looking photo. Well, better to my view, you know, feel free to disagree. That's okay, but um, I'm not done. I'm still here in Develop Raw. I spend a lot of time here and I recommend doing that, taking your time, not trying to rush through it. Um, I am gonna use a slight S-curve, just, just gentle, really. I mean, just a little bit. I'm just adding a little bit of contrast there just to give the photo a little bit of a bump. I'm gonna go into color next. And what I wanna do here is actually lift the exposure, uh, excuse me, lift the warmth a little bit to just around 6,600. And I'm also gonna lift the tint just a little bit uh, simply because I just kinda like that. There's a little bit of that kinda pinkish kinda look in the sky. And whenever I'm uh, editing sunsets and it has a little bit of that, I tend to do that with temperature. Uh, saturation, I'm gonna leave alone, but I am gonna give a slight bump in vibrance, like a 13, 14, something like that. So again, so far, you know, much improved much better view into the darker parts of the photo, which is which is cool. So there it is uh, before and after. Still not done though with the develop raw, and that is because I wanna get down here. I don't really feel like I need to sharpen this one that much, and, and there's no real noise to mess with. Uh, I am gonna go into optics. I'm gonna do an auto distortion correction, and that has a very minor impact on the photo. So then I went into lens distortion, and I moved this up to about 18 or so, and uh, basically just fixed a little bit of the distortion I was shooting this with a 20 millimeter prime lens. You know, those wide angles just give a little bit of distortion. So starting photo, current photo, just using Develop Raw, super powerful. It's an amazing tool. I highly recommend you become familiar with all the various aspects of it. If you want more videos specifically about Develop Raw, let me know in the comments down below. Okay, now that I've finished that, I'm gonna go get Structure AI. And one of the things I like to do on my landscapes, and honestly, if you've been here before, then you know I like to do this on about every photo, and that is I like to add a little bit of crunch, where to me it makes sense to have crunch, which in, which in this photo would be like the trees, uh, you know, basically, uh, the trees and, and the boat. And then I like to remove uh, detail, I like to smooth out skies and water. Well, that's where AI masking comes in so handy because it automatically identifies these things. Again, watch that other video if you're not familiar with it. I'm gonna go ahead and click AI mask, let the AI do its little animation here, which is kind of cool. It makes me think of like constellations in the sky, but it's identifying all the various aspects. You can see it does it pretty quickly because I was talking this whole time and it figured it out. And um, the easiest way I think to isolate everything except the sky and the water is actually just to click sky and let it select it. There it is. And then I'm gonna select water as well and let that be selected. And there that is. Now, the only other thing I wanna do is it did not pick up like the wake behind the boat. So I'm gonna go into brush and I'm just gonna come over here and paint a little bit so that I can paint the mass into that. So I've now effectively completely isolated the sky and the water. But this is positive structure, so I don't want positive structure in those areas. So this is where the masking controls come in handy. Another great addition to Luminar Neo this time. So I'm just gonna invert the mask, which is basically just flipping it, right? The inversion of it. And if I click show, you can 
see now my mask, which is positive structure, so cranking up a little bit of the detail, applying to the, street, uh, the trees, the boat, and then all the boat houses and boats and the land over on the left-hand side. So all that's getting this adjustment of 34. And now I can come in and do more if I want. I wanna be careful because this high, you know, the higher you go, you notice it's getting a little bit brighter too. And, and we're gonna work on fixing that. So I've got a mask that's perfect. Now, I could come back and do some um, copying and inverting mask to use it again, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. So again, super happy to have these tools. I'm gonna go into mask, max, mask actions, and I'm gonna click on copy, which basically means I need to copy that mask because I'm going to use it again, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm in Structure AI. I'm going to go ahead and click and close the tool, which commits it. As you know, I'm going to open it again. I'm going to go into Masking, and I'm going to go into the Mask Actions, and I'm going to click Paste. And so basically, I'm now telling Luminar Neo to use that mask again. So I've got the mask in place, but remember, I need to invert it. So if I go over here and start adding or reducing structure, you can see if I add structure, I'm back in the same place as I was. I wanna remove structure because I, this is for the sky and water. So make sure you're in the masking tools and a mask actions and make sure you click invert so that you're impacting the opposite part of the photo. The beauty of copying and pasting and inverting is you just create it once and you can use it again and again and again. You can always click on show and it'll show you what's being masked here. I'm going negative structure in the sky and the water. So the trees, the houseboats, and the boat on the water are all untouched. Just make sure that you're aware of that and then, you know, season to taste over here uh, in terms of how much smoothing you want to do. I'm going to go, you know, about the same as I went positive, maybe like a negative 35. So I'm fine with that. I'm going to go ahead and commit and I'm going to go into color because there's definitely some color things I want to adjust in this photo. The first thing is it's pretty vibrant and colorful. And as much as I love my vibrance and my color, I do want it to be a realistic landscape, at least pretty close to realism. Uh, maybe I'll leave it at that. So I'm going negative 10 on color, uh, excuse me, on saturation and vibrance, but I'm also going to get into specific color channels because those trees are, are really bright and really yellow and really kind of saturated. And for me, it's more about the motion of the boat going down the river and of course the color and the excitement around the sunset with the reflection. So I want to kind of calm down some of the visibility and uh, the pop that's happening in those trees. So I did um, an overall saturation and vibrance reduction. I'm also going to go into individual individual color channels with saturation of yellow and green. I'm going to pull both of those down at about a 10. So there we go, negative 10 and negative 10. And then I'm also going to go into luminance and do a similar thing for yellow and green. So negative 10 here and also a negative 10. So that's a little bit more subtle, but I also want to just get it in those certain areas. I don't want it to impact any other colors that might be in the houseboats, for example. So once again, I'm gonna use that mask and I'm gonna come over here and click paste. So if I show you the mask, there we go. It's basically uh, impacting the tree line and the boats and that sort of thing. But I feel like I wanna customize that a little bit. So this is where you can stack masks and really get a lot of control. I'm gonna go ahead and erase the mask from this boat. So I just use the brush and come and brush over that to get the all the color reduction off of that. I'm also gonna do the same over here on these houseboats because I really, I like the color there. There's a little bit of pop and I wanna leave that. So I don't want the saturation, vibrance, and the individual color channels to be reduced there. I really just want it in the tree line. So again, customize the mask, kind of copy and paste and invert however you see fit in order to get the photo looking the way you want it to look. And as you know, based on masking, it's all about control and the AI mask tools just give you so much of it, which is fantastic. So I'm going to commit that. That's color and I'm happy with that. I'm going to pop over here to landscape and golden hour and I'm going to do a about a 40 or so, but you notice it's impacting the trees and the uh, uh, everything else, right? And I really just want it in the sky and the water. I don't want those trees to get more vibrant. I just turn that down in the previous tool. Once again, in the masking, uh, I'll just rebuild it here just to show you how quick and easy it is. So as you can see, it identifies elements. I just love that. And so it's quick and easy just to come back, let AI mask do the magic, identify the sky like that, and then click here on water, identify the water, and there you go. And in fact, I'm gonna go back and get the brush simply because, and remember, I, I was on a race, so just make sure you're back on paint if you wanna paint. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the golden hour into the boat and this wake. So just a couple of seconds of brush work there. And then I'm gonna come over here and do the same on these houseboats. And there's a little bit of water here kind of behind this. I'm gonna get that as well. So consider that a gentle reminder that you can come in and use the brush after you've used the AI mask. But what it was here is I wanted Golden Hour to go into everything basically except the trees, simply because I just spent a moment trying to fix the color and the intensity of those trees. I wanted to keep that low, but I want that Golden Hour pop in the sky and the reflection, and I think it's fine to have on the boat as well as on the boat houses.
Okay, so I want to look at the mask. So you can always click on show to see your mask. And I'm going to copy this mask simply because, like I said, I've been changing them all slightly when I copy and invert and all those kind of things. And the next tool, I want to have a copy of this specific mask because I want to use it for a specific purpose. And that is down here in Mystical. I'm going to go ahead and drag this. And I go to about 50. And I like that, except it's just too bright on the sky. So, you know, again, it's just the same message again and again. I'm going to go ahead and paste the mask here. And then I click on show and you can see what it is. But really what I want to do is Mystical does a great job of adding a little bit of shadow into some of those darker areas, but it kind of brightens up some of the highlight areas, which is really the sky and the water. So once again, I want to invert. So I'm going to invert so that Mystical is now just applying to the tree line. If I turn off show and I can show you the before and after. If you look at the before, especially on the right hand side, you can see it quite well a little bit brighter and now a little bit darker. So that mystical just added back a little bit of that romantic shadow kind of feel, which I think makes sense. The sun setting out of frame, getting a little bit darker, it is sunset. I don't want too much light on those trees. I think mystical does a good job of adding that little bit of shadow, but also softening it up a little bit because that tree line and all the detail there is not really something I want the viewer to focus on. Okay, a couple of minor moves and we're about done. I, I like to look at super contrast on a lot of my photos simply because it's incredibly powerful and what I ended up going to was something about like this which is basically a 15 on highlights and about a 70 on midtones. I did not adjust the shadows but as you know if you've been here before and if you've done it yourself you know super contrast when you adjust contrast in those tonal layers it can really make the colors pop so just be careful experiment season to taste all those kind of things but a little bit flatter photo with a little bit less contrast now a little bit richer. It also, I think, accentuates what I just did with Mystical by adding a little bit more shadow into some of those tree areas. Uh, there it is before and there it is now, but also makes the colors pop a little bit. So just trying to be sensible here, I ended up going back to color. I brought overall saturation down by about a 10 or so, maybe a 12. Just want to keep it kind of tame. Some of the colors are fairly vibrant, but I wanted to be aware of that. And then the only other thing I like to do and I talked about this in a recent video, which you can see there, is Accent AI I used to think of as something that I would use right after develop, just as it is, you know, as it appears in the stack. Instead of using it early, I'm starting to find I prefer it to use, or I prefer to use it into my edit just to give a little bit of accent, hence the name, uh, instead of really using it to relight my photo and pop colors and contrast and things like that. I like it for just a little accent piece um, at the end. So I might go to like 15 or 20 here, and I just experiment with that, especially in landscapes. It can amp them up like that. If I show you the before and after, there it is before, and there it is after. That's across the entire photo. But as you know, with Mask AI, you can come in and do lots of customization, isolate specific elements of the photo, and apply it just where those elements are, if that's what you want to do. I wanted to go ahead and put it across the entire photo and that's the full edit so let me show you the before and after that's what we started like a little bit dark which i tend to expose to the left a little bit anyway so a little bit dark and a little bit muted color but in real life it was a bit more vibrant and what i wanted to do is bring back some of those warm tones brighten it up a little bit without overdoing the brightness or the detail uh, or the color uh, in the like the trees where they're very green and yellow and kind of vibrant. I toned those down a little bit, but brought up kind of the pop, for lack of a better word, in the sky and the water. One other thing to think about when you have something like this and you have an object that is basically giving the impression of moving through the frame. So this boat here in the bottom right is basically, you know, it's got the whole river to go. That's why when I saw it coming, I ran to this side of the bridge and I was like, I'm gonna get that boat early. Because if you get it middle or all the way down in the frame, it, like it's already passed. Whereas your viewer seeing the boat here can imagine the boat kind of flowing through and I just think it looks better. Because it's headed that direction, you wanna give it room in the photo to continue heading in that direction. So the only other thing you might could do is come in here and choose a subject uh, like a vignette, maybe something like that, and create a little bit of a vignette just to kind of focus the light a little bit more around the specific uh, item, uh, which in this case, of course, is the uh, is the boat. So you could do something like that, and that's probably a little too much of a vignette. You know, maybe something like that, just a slight vignette to give it a little bit of uh, extra oomph and help draw the viewer's attention to that piece of the photo. I think they're going to see it anyway, but there it is before the vignette, and there it is after. That's some tips, ideas, some tricks about using Mask AI and how I use it on landscapes, things to think about, and how you can isolate specific areas of the photo with Mask AI or AI Mask. I'm not sure how I'm going to end up calling it, but regardless, that's a great tool, super handy. Hope this gave you some ideas, my friends. 
Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves. And until then, my friends, adios.